On today's show, I'm gonna help you build a budget home theater. I'm gonna tell you what to look out for, what to be mindful of, and how to have the most awesomest home theater for the price of a nice TV. Let's do this. Welcome everyone, my name's Chris. Now, if you haven't already, do yourself a favor and go up here somewhere and click on one of these links to check out what I reckon home theater is and how crazy expensive home theater can be. So with that in mind, I've done the research, I've looked around the American, American, we live in Australia, I've looked around the Australian marketplace and I found what I think is the best home theater for your dollar, okay? Now, we could go crazy cheap here, but we don't want that. I wanna get you something that will last you at least five years, future proofs you, and something you can actually build on progressively over time and upgrade as you see fit, okay? so. Let's get into this. Hey, um, this is gonna be home theater for like five to seven people in a small to medium room that's dedicated to home theater, okay? So, let's get into it now. First up, AV receiver. This was a bit of a challenge as I wanted the ability to be able to deliver big sound for a small to medium room with a possibility of running 7.2 surround, that is seven surround sound speakers and two subwoofers, or 5.1.2 to do Dolby Atmos or DTS X. Okay, so that's going to be 5.12 for five surround speakers, one subwoofer, and two overhead or height speakers. With Dolby Atmos and DTS X support, the Sony AM has a four in, one out HDMI connectivity with a 4K 60p 4x4x4 pass through and HDCP 2.2, HDR10, and Dolby Vision support. It does support Bluetooth connectivity, as well as automatic phase matching and calibration mic. Now these used to actually be only found on high-end amps several years ago, so it's pretty impressive for this price point. And then topping it out, we've got high resolution audio and direct stream digital audio. At $799, this amp is absolutely great value and hard to beat. Okay, next, speakers. I went for a combination here with the Yamaha 5.1 speaker pack and subwoofer with a lesser known but perfectly capable in-ceiling speaker by Jensen. The Yamaha pack features a two-way bass reflex speaker system, wall mountable surround speakers and a front firing active subwoofer with advanced YST2 technology. Tuned by Yamaha, this 5.1 speaker pack brings a powerful surround sound package to your home media setup. Topping it all out and to give you those uh, height speakers, we're going to just use two Jensen 110 watt in-ceiling speakers. Now these suckers have um, 28 millimeter silk dome tweeters, uh, which can actually be directed, as well as some good meaty size um, woofers to give you that oomph. And up next, a projector. And what's one of the better brands in home theater? Epson. And here I've chosen the TW5600. With a light output of 2500 lumens and a resolution of 1080p on a 16 by 9 ratio chip, has a great contrast ratio of 35,000 to 1. Has lens shift for vertical movement so you can easily place it in a room. 3D optional if you want to actually go down that route. As well as a good zoom lens so you can actually position this pretty well within the room. At $935, this thing's a steal. I could have chosen a DLP projector for perhaps a bit more punch, but some people like me actually see the rainbows. Okay, so if you don't know what that is, definitely make sure you go check out a DLP projector before you go invest one for your home theater because not everyone enjoys the experience of them. Whereas in the LCD, like in this Epson projector, is perfectly fine. Okay, up next, let's talk about screen. And here I've gone with an elite screen at 110 inches and 16 by 9 ratio. This screen has a 1.1 game factor and it's going to be great because it's going to give you a nice good punchy picture with a 6 centimeter aluminium frame with black velvet to absorb the light in case there's any overspill. The screen game with 1.1 is going to enable you to actually do 3D movies because when you put the 3D on it's got like shutters that turn on and off uh, really really fast and in doing so you actually decrease the amount of light coming into your eyes. So uh, something to be wary of if you do want to watch 3D movies using shutter technology. The screen will obviously be able to do 4K, HD, HDR, you name it. It's easy to assemble and install in minutes. It's spring tension with fiberglass rods to ensure that there's actually no saggy spots within the screen. And the wall bracket allows the screen to be slid horizontally 
this thing is basically like a massive, massive picture. And in my home theater, as you can see here, um, this is another 110 inch screen. Might not look on your screen right now. I think that's the optics of the camera. But nonetheless, uh, it's hard to appreciate the jump from say 55 or 65 inch that you might be watching on YouTube right now to going to 110 inches. It's phenomenally massive and you start feeling that real cinema experience. All right, let's finish this off. Blu-ray player. Now I couldn't decide on a cheap and cheerful Blu-ray player with built-in streaming apps. After doing some research, I found that most of them for the low $100 mark were several years old. And I'm talking like 2014, 2016 vintage. And compared to the current models, they're slow and they lack a lot of features. And I think this is actually terribly disappointing for the Australian market. So then I examined Blu-ray players that meet the principles of lasting five years. And you know what? I couldn't constantly offer a suggestion. Why? Well, for a decent Blu-ray player, you're looking about $180. So for another $100, you can actually get a 4K model, which ticks all the boxes and will last you for many years to come. As such, I went with the Sony UBP X700 Compact 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player. Featuring obviously 4K output, this thing plays everything from DVDs, Blu-ray 4K, in addition to YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, HDR streams, and has microcast abilities. On the audio side of things, you get Dolby Atmos and DTS-X, as well as apps for Pandora and Spotify. Reviews are glowing, and they've noted the speedy load times on all fronts, as well as 3D disc playback, HDR10 and Dolby Vision, so that in the future, the only item you need to upgrade will be your projector. In stores, I recently saw it at JB Hi-Fi for 20% off, and that was uh, great at $288. This thing's a must buy. So all up, how much do you think it is? All right, before I give you the answer, put your answer down below. If you haven't already subscribed, why haven't you? Do it now. Um, okay, you ready for the drum roll? Chevy, do the drum roll. The total, $3,738. All right, so for those skeptics out there who are like, man, for that much money, I could get myself a sweet 65, 75 inch 4K TV. And I say, yeah, you could, but that's all you can get for that much money. Have you got the surround sound? Have you got the Blu-ray player for 4K? No. You've only got yourself a TV, which is realistically half the size of what you're going to be producing with this projector. And I must say, the Epson brand and projection, they're very sweet, give you a cinema-like experience, and something you really, really treasure. And so others would say, hey, I could actually do this a lot cheaper. And I'd say, yeah, you could. But you know what? If you get yourself like a data projector, uh, and you're going to get the chicken wire mesh, and you're going to have, you know, the... Uh, it's just going to be terrible. It's going to be a dim picture. It's not going to be cinema-like at all. And I would really, really encourage you to not project onto a white painted wall. The experience is just nowhere near what you can actually get by going the proper route and getting a screen. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing a mid-level and a high-level home theater. So if you're thinking, hey, my budget can extend a bit further than that, hang around like to see you back here. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to hit me up. I'm always looking into this sort of stuff. I built two home theaters myself and I'm always thinking the next thing I'd love to buy. So please ask me, I'm always happy to help. And stay techy.